Hi. So today I decided to talk to you about squares. As you can see, there are a lot of different types, ages, purposes, and I have some of mine laid out here for you to see. We're going to start today, I think, starting about talking about the steel squares or framer squares. Here's one example this with this copper finish from the 1950s. And if you look down here, this one here is called a takedown square because it has this little piece here and it's got a dovetail, sliding dovetail joint so you can take it apart and put it in your toolbox in case your toolbox isn't big enough to hold a large square. This book I recommend if you're a carpenter or a woodworker and you're going to work with these steel squares because this tells you some of the amazing things that you can do with a steel square and the charts that they have on them. They vary from doing stair treads to rafters and while you think of a square in terms of usually just determining whether a board is straight or square at a 90 or 45 degree angle, these actually offer you even the formulas and the charts to be able to do round rafters, how to divide circles into polygons, and for example these two pieces will fit on your square. So if you're doing stair treads you can, for the uh, runners, you can you can set them for your for your rise and your tread and then repeat it as you go along. Of course you have here a larger drywall square which is 48 inches long and the purpose in that is to set at the top of the piece of sheetrock and to scribe down with your knife to cut it to whatever length you want, a specialty square. If you want to know more about squares, I suggest finding an old Audell's Carpentry and Builder's Guide or books, older books on use of tools. But this book in particular, The Steel Square, will give you so much information. Now, this is a square but this is sort of a guide and this is uh, its sole purpose is to give you the different angles for polygons or if you're doing a multifaceted baskets and things like that, these are all different angles that you'll need. Oftentimes, carpenters need to div divide an angle in half and Stanley made this angle divider years ago with wood <laughs> and no matter how you move these, this piece will always be half of whatever the angle this is. A more modern version of an angle divider is done by Bridge City here and again the same thing these will come out and then you have half of that angle to find there. If you're also trying to find the center of a rod or something these are particularly useful and they come in different sizes. This is the smallest one I have next size and a larger one and if you put a rod underneath here, and this against the circular part, it'll give you a line through the middle. And then just turning it and adding another line will give you the center of that. I'm going to switch and come around up here because I want to show you <clears throat> in here, these are bevel squares. And the purpose of those, and they have a multi multitude of them, is mostly to transfer one angle to another for a cut. So this is a machinist bevel and is a bit more exact than say a cheap plastic Stanley version, a current type. This one I always had problems with because the wing nut is lower than this portion here. So when you're setting an angle on a board and you've got that down there, you can't turn this without moving your bevel. So I don't particularly like this one. I prefer the type that has the release on top so that you can set your bevel, lock it, and then move it without the bevel moving. Now, this is a machinist square, and this is the most precise square that I have for a 90 degree, and it's the one that I use mostly when I'm drawing a line on a plain blade or a chisel that I want to get perpendicular to the edge. These planes are tri, 
or rather squares, excuse me. But these squares here are tri-squares, and they only do this 90-degree angle. Some are British, some are American. Some versions changed and added this angle part here so you could do a 45 as well as a 90-degree angle. Up here are builder's squares, and they're a bit more precise. They have a level built in and an adjustment for what degree and uh, th that you want your, your, your tongue or, or longer portion of the square to be set at. This one here is only 90 degrees, but it has a little feature here that you can pull out, and that will keep this from turning when you're measuring across a board. It actually has a little piece that'll come out and sit on the edge of the board, as well as the new Bridge City level also has. So that way when you're sitting it on a board for your square, it actually will sit flat and then that can be tucked away. The combination square has the 45 and the 90 degree and an adjustment for it going through. And this is a set one. This one actually can be adjusted to whatever angle that you want. Speed squares are great for carpenters, but not necessarily for use in fine woodworking where you really want an exact line. But these serve other purposes, including these little notches here where you can put your pencil and slide it along as if it's a marking gauge. <coughs> or you can use it for these different angles and use it sort of like a bevel. This is a tailor square that belonged to my great-grandfather. And the workmanship on this square is really quite beautiful with the brass inlay. And these markings here all relate to the tailor's position and what they would be measuring. Drafting squares today come in plastic so they can see through them. But in the olden days, like my grandfather, when he was an engineer, he used ones like this that are really quite beautiful and amazing that a hundred years later they still stay nice and flat. Here's an example of some of the angles that you would want to use a square on. And I want to show you real quickly, when you're going to buy a square, the way to test it. The first thing is to make sure that the edge that you're working against is straight. Once you know that that's a straight line, then you can set your square against it and draw a line. Then reverse the square this way and draw another line right next to it. You can see that this old square here is approximately out one eighth of an inch over five and a half inches in length. So this blade here is crooked to this line here. Now this one is riveted, so the only adjustment that you can have on this is to resand this plate in here so that it then comes to a 90 degree. This one also has the 45 degree piece so that you could do a quick 45 degree. And again, I did a test on this one and I found it to be fairly accurate. It's only out about a 32nd of an inch over that time space. This is the first square I had that my father bought me when I was a child. And it today is still very accurate. The reason is that I've been very cautious with it, and I want to warn anyone using a plane and owning one to make sure you treat it as a, a specialty tool that needs to be cared for properly. It cannot be thrown into a workbench randomly because it might get nicks along these lines, and that'll mess up when you're measuring and drawing a mark. It'll, it'll damage the mark that you want to write. As well, you should make sure that you don't drop it or hit it on anything because it'll take it out of square. So always treat this as an important tool that needs to be protected. If you're going to put it in a toolbox, then make sure that you build a toolbox where this is either kept in the lid, but it's kept away from the other tools and not to get banged up. I hope I've um, taught you something. Um, I would love to hear from you about your thoughts on these uh, videos that I'm doing, and I'd love to hear any questions, or if there's any additional information maybe some of you experts can add to what I'm saying, 
Uh, I'd be glad to hear it because I always love to learn more about the tools that I use. Thanks for viewing. Bye.